absolute goat. Uh, you know, I've been posting a bunch of memes and stuff on Instagram and like tagging you and just like nothing but goat icons the whole way through. And you just wrapped up your final tournament, regular season tournament of the year. You finished second, uh, and you had a heck of a tournament, heck of a week, but more importantly, a heck of a career. Thirty three years. So, congratulations for making it. Thirty three years. You you put a hell of a stamp on this uh, on this this sport. Yeah, you know, this year has gone like like that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I wanted to win in my final year, and I thought St. Clair would be my best chance. Oh, yeah. And I just, I couldn't, you know, I just, I was around the right kind of fish, but I just couldn't make it happen. I mean, Jordan Lee just annihilated the yeah. Giants, you know. And uh, so I was disappointed because Saginaw is a place I don't have any, I mean, I haven't fished it in 30 years. Oh, the wow. The last time I've been there was in 1992 I filmed a spinnerbait video. Oh, wow. <laughs> and then, so when it got us on the schedule, um, you know, a month and a half before uh, the tournament, I went over there and went around for two days. Of course, it blew pretty big time, you know, so I didn't get to learn much. So I didn't even, after practice, I didn't even know that I'd get a bite. Wow. I caught a couple of smallmouth, but they were, you know, I had one big one, one two-pounder, and one little one, and but... I could see they were there on the spot and uh, yeah. uh, managed it for a while, but wow. yeah. But anyways, yeah. So yeah, so as it sits right now, uh, like you're coming down from Saginaw Bay and you're going back home to Kalamazoo. Yeah. You've got some obligations, and our RV is parked right here on the, the shoreline of Lake St. Clair, so it made it nice and convenient for you. But right now, I'm pretty sure that the life of KVD is not so convenient with all the obligations <laughs> and things like that. Although things will be slowing down for you on the tournament circuit side, you are just as busy as ever. Yeah, the the big thing for me is the the tour schedule, as you guys know, is I mean it's it's structured and it's 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 rigorous. You know, sure. I mean it's twenty weeks a year that you have no flexibility in your yeah. schedule. You know, I mean you you got to be there for the event on the days they are. Otherwise, you get no points. You know, yeah. there's no sick days, right? You know, and I've lived that for 33 years. So, have you ever taken a sick day? Have you ever missed a? Uh, uh, I like... never have. I one time at Pickwick when our boys were little, uh -huh. they got the flu so bad, bad, and I got it. I it was horrendous. I was so sick the day I fished um, that I didn't think I could go. I told Oof. Sherry, I said, "There's no way I can go tomorrow. There's no way." And she said, "Just." <laughs> Take some, you know, medicine and try to give, see if what goes on in the morning. And, you know, the first day, the day I got, so the boys got sick first. We ended up having to take them to the hospital for mm. dehydration. Oh, wow. They they were just, had the flu really bad. And then I got it during the first competition day. And I had that day, I had like four for 28. Four bass. <laughs> wow. Couldn't catch a limit. Oh, it was an early God. spring jerkbait tournament. Menendez ended up winning that one. but Wow. Uh, the next day I was so sick. I, I think I caught one bass or two bass or Ugh. something like that, but and they weren't big, but uh, it was it was hard to make it through. But and sp you, speaking of Sherry, by the way, I, there's something about having a strong, smart woman by your side in this sport. Am I right? Oh, like, I, there aren't no too many doubt. guys I could say that, but definitely you. She is um, she's different than uh, a lot of wives in yeah. the fact that, yeah, she's she's strong yeah she's, oh yeah uh but she doesn't want to ever be yeah. in the spotlight she's, you never really see her around nope. she, you know she's getting Cross. business handled Cross. but you she's don't she's always behind the scenes she doesn't want to be on camera yeah. she doesn't yeah. like to do interviews she, she doesn't just, make it about herself no. at all uh -uh. She, yeah that's cool but she's very she's involved in everything you know i mean brand image yeah. mm -hmm. likeness uh all the you know obviously sponsor communications and things like that she's you know, she's the business manager. That is so, so amazing. And she's, it's just the, that's her personality. Like and, you see guys on tours that kind of, kind of have that, but really yeah. don't understand. I mean, to that magnitude, right? I mean, you've been doing it a long time. She's seen so much success. Yeah, I mean, we were dating before I was a professional and she still married me for some dumb reason. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. So. Um, you know. When you were going into this year, like at what point were you, were you like okay i'm ready to retire was that just before the season started yeah or? it really it you know it's something i've thought about for a while i've um you know every everybody's career or you know any professional athlete at some point you have to uh you're either forced out or you you retire on your own mm -hmm. and um i 
I knew that, you know, and then time's coming. I mean, I've watched, I've watched a lot of guys and nobody, and I, I get it. You know, everybody's personal decision is, yeah. is theirs, but I just wanted to choose my time, you yeah. know? Um, and I've, man, I've had a phenomenal career, had a great time. I've won a lot of titles and accolades and I've, you know, worked hard for sponsors and, and done a lot of things around competitive fishing, worked hard for the leagues, tried to better yeah. the sport, be a great ambassador. And, you know, I, I just didn't want to go till sure you're not relevant anymore. Sure, or anything right. like that. I, and Smart. I don't, I don't want to be out there if I'm not, if I don't feel like I'm competitive either. And uh, that's not the case. And even today, you know, I well, mean, you got I, second, so I'd <laughs> say that's not yeah, the well, issue. Yeah, well, you know, I've, it's uh, for those who were watching and A-O-I. yesterday. We were watching. We were glued to it. And and you saying staying here on this, but it was like twenty minutes ago. You said staying here on this spot would be giving up, and I'm not giving up. So you made another run and said, hey. Caught a couple big ones here the other day, and like that, that that's that's true. Like to the very last minute, I mean, you said, you stay, never, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, I, I've never been that way or, or fished that way. So, for me, um, you know, I talked with Sherry about it. I mean, it's something we've talked about for a while, but it three years ago, no, I just I was like I'm going, I'm, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm a tournament yeah. uh, guy, and I just get so competitive and. Yeah. Just it never even was in the realm. You know, Davey Height was my roommate for a mm-hmm. long time, and Scott Rook. And, uh, I mean, we talked about it a lot. And when Davey made the transition out of fishing into, you know, he got that opportunity yep. to commentate for bass. Yep. Um, you know, we talked about it a lot, and he knew it was a good— And Scott, it, it, then Scott peeled off about the same time, yes. right? Yeah. Scott, well, he had an opportunity to— uh, Tackle to, shop or yeah, something? Yeah, to, yep. to run yep. the tackle yep. store, and now he's running— I like Scott Rook. Yeah, he's running Trader Bills and in Hot Springs, you know, the Marine dealership and yeah. the tackle store, and he's, you know, he's a big good. gun guy. I like yeah. I like well, Scott. He, Scott's cool. Yeah, it, it was a great opportunity, so it was a good time for him. So yeah. it was, a, you know, it was his transition, and uh, and same for Davey. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, he wants to be, you know, relevant. He wants to be fish, and he wants to be around the sport. And what an opportunity, you know, timing is is everything, and it's the same for me. You know, I mean, I just I'm not retiring by no, a long of shot, but. From the tournament scene, um, you know, I, I, if I win another tournament, is it is it going to change my right. career who you, who you or are. anything like that? For no. Sure. So, right. I mean, obviously, you want to win every one. I mean, I've fought all year long. And, and the, the weird part was all season is like we go to Lake Murray. And, of course, that's Davy Heights' hometown. Yeah. I stayed with one of right. his best friends right. uh, there at his lake house. And, man, you sit there and I'm like, Man, this is the last time I'm going to compete on Lake Murray. Murray. Yeah. We're at Kissimmee. I'm like, man, this is my last time at After at all Kissimmee. those years yeah. and all those memories. And I was right there, and it just is like, gosh, dang it. you yeah. know. And all those tournaments, you just uh, – it's easy to say after the fact, right? We right, all do sure. it. Of course. All do it. It's like, man, I wish I would have zigged when I zagged. Or sure. God, if I would have just made that transition an hour earlier, I might have a chance to have, of be in contention or to win. And uh, So – I still second guess myself like that. I mean, do you really? Wow. Yeah. Well, last week at Saginaw was one I didn't. I mean, it's such a giant place, and the way it went down, um, I didn't have any other options. I knew I could go catch a decent bag of largemouth, and decent and I was, 14, 15, yeah, yeah, I was do I was doing that, and you know, it if if one guy had to, you know, set you know found you know found the mother load like that. Right. Okay. So catches the biggest it. bag of the week, and that's when you win. You know, yeah. when, when you when you do that. So, uh, but after the fact, it, I wasn't mad. I wasn't sad. I actually, I cried on the way running back in after wow. lines out, and it wasn't cameras were off. It was yeah, just no, you just, and the lake. Yep. Just me and the lake. I yep. got I got my camera guy, and yep. I got my official in the boat there. But I just I I yep. truly cried. That's amazing. Tears of joy. <laughs> just just like I had a great day. You right. gave uh, it everything you had. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what fitting, more fitting than Saginaw Bay, the wind's blowing 25 miles an hour, <laughs> yeah. five footers, it's raining sideways for hours. Yeah. Mother Nature paid me back for all the time. Oh, there you I, go. I, That's a good story. Absolutely. You know, so, yeah. and, and she won yeah. that day. And, and how many she times in your career have, right. have you been taken out of it by yep. 
something that happens that Dude, way. Dude, you're talking... That's out of your control. Oh, I mean... You're talking to a guy who's got, like, three seconds and a handful of thirds and, like, zero trophies. So, like, standing here next to you with all the accolades, trophies, and first-place finishes... When I saw you yesterday, I mean, you were leading the tournament. You were going into it. Every, the whole fishing industry was watching, like, dude, Kevin's going to win this fairy tale story, you know, but when Mother Nature kicks in like that, what, what can you do? She's yeah. a bitch. She like, what, I mean, what are you going to do? Yeah. And, and when I see you, you know, you're making these calculations in your head, and so many times over your career, 20-something plus wins or whatever it was, I mean, so many times in your career, you make all the right moves on that fourth day, that final day, championship Sunday. But like you said, it's kind of like payback. So that's, I mean, that's yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's pretty pretty crazy. I, I didn't have any other options, so no. I just I did the best. Sent it. You yeah. sent it. So I I want to go back to the whole retirement thing because I you know I'm a girl. These are yeah. the things I wonder about. Was there like a moment in with like the boys or something? Because you're not a you're not a grandfather yet, right? Nope. nope. But was there like that sort of thing going through your head? Where did you say like okay, I'm content with with and I know you're a competitor, so content might not be the right word. Yeah. No, it's it is. It's like you know, I just finally was at peace with with the the idea of it and ready. You know, I I love um, the other side of the business too. Obviously, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I work. I've been doing it a long time. I, mm -hmm. I know promotionally what you have to do. I've got a ton of great partners that I've had yep. since day one. I mean, yep. I've run a nitro since. 1989 That's right cool. i've never had another boat in my professional career i've been with bass pro shops the whole time mm -hmm. i mean all these super long relationships and and i have these partners that we have a lot invested in each other so uh, to be honest with you i had these conversations with them because i wasn't sure how everybody would really act or, or react yeah. or think about it but overwhelmingly i think they're they're pretty excited because i'm going to have more opportunities i'm, I'm still going to be have you uh, announced what you're doing not, no I mean, you I, haven't right yeah I'm, I'm going to be out there with a grinding creating, yeah. Good. creating content yeah yeah filming Good. shows yep. well, you know whatever do doing doing that um just do you like to do shows i like, love it yeah you really do? I really, you're good at it you're really good at it i like um so i'm not teaching i'm not like funny like Zona Zona. No, jimmy, right. jimmy i don't giggle like jimmy hughes <laughs> right, or, right. or whatever but what i think that um i do and well and that's and I, I get this feedback from a lot of people is you know they i think it's i i build confidence in people trying there to learn new things techniques yes. um and my style is very different yep for a lot of people right i'm not just you know casting a you know on your screen a, a, you're a winding a thunder I'm, you're I'm winding a thunder fast, you know, yeah, yeah. you know i'm yeah. a you know, a power fish and, and I'm going to crank and jerk and buzz bait and do, do things like that. And, um, a lot of people don't have confidence in that. So, uh, you know, it's very rewarding to me when, you know, I go to a, a show or I'm, I'm at a, uh, expo or weigh in or whatever it is. And people go, man, I saw that, that show, the strike King pro team journal that you did with the, you know, cranking a six XD or a 1.5 or whatever it is. And, I, I went out there with my dad and we had the best day ever, or I caught the biggest fish or I took my son and, you know, I mean, it's very gratifying when right. you help people have fun on the water. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's our job. Mm -hmm. um, I'm very competitive. I, I love to do it, but for most people, it's their release, right? Yes. It's their getaway, it's from... their getaway from work. And, and the unique thing about, uh, weekend anglers compared to a tournament angler is that we're very similar in the fact that you have a very limited amount of time and you want to spend your time catching mm -hmm. not yeah you know if you if you're the weekend angler and you got saturday to fish till noon until yep. you've got to do your chores and mow the lawn and all oh, that yeah. you want to be out there and, and putting some in the boat sure. and that's so, why you're watching the youtube videos or the content on thursday afternoon with your buddies sharing it with your buddies to follow the weather apps and, and, all that you know, all that stuff so yeah and that's uh I, so i love to do that and that's what i want to continue to do and that, that's, awesome. that's what we'll do of course I mean, we have a lot of other things going on too. With our, you know, we we started. Cherry is the one that started our foundation, mm -hmm. and we, uh, you know, Johnny Morris is a great uh, friend of mine, mm -hmm. and I've seen so many things that he's done behind the scenes, and just what he's done for conservation to, yeah. for everybody for yep. the outdoors. Yep. And um, he's been an inspiration to me. To you know, I, I have the opportunity for and sure. have to have a voice and a platform. Awesome. to bring awareness to a lot of different things you know we've done the last couple of years at our red crest events we've done 
habitat projects and awesome. stocking programs for F1s in those areas. And it just brings it brings it to light where it makes a big difference and sure. a lot more people get involved and, you know, whatever it, it it helps magnify the sure. message and it makes a difference, you know I mean? And these are in various states, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah okay, what, good. Because you, know, you look we, at a state like Texas, we had yes. a Texas uh, Parks and Wildlife guy on talking about these types yep. of programs. So that's awesome seeing that in other states outside of Texas. Yeah, yeah. so like when the when we were at Grand Lake, we did a habitat project mm -hmm. there. We put a bunch of uh, mossback fish habitats, a, a, a lot of them, out there. And then we stocked a bunch of F1s in there. So that's I awesome. mean, that's... You know they're they're they did Strong. a little bit yeah. and there's that's where they're seeing 10 pounders in grand lake now wow. you know so um and it all makes a difference See, the, the 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 problem that we have is we have so much more fishing pressure mm -hmm. now we've got a lot more people involved covid i think really turned people to the outdoors um and we have a lot more knowledge right we, we're yeah. teaching people oh, yeah. got, electronics. A, electronics are better um uh, Mapping. we're doing a better job of you can like say you can pull up on your phone and how learn to. Any, how to anything yep. on any place yep so people are better but as you know you're traveling around fishing i think fishing is better bass fishing is better today than it's ever been ever been and that's a testament to to great conservation Cultivation. and management correct because they're not building more lakes no and they're not we're not getting more water and if we're going to have more people fishing and all these young kids are coming up gotta conserve and, and yep. to keep them into it we right. have to have quality fishing sure. and so that that's really important so that's so you're not on the uh the bandwagon that forward facing sonar is absolutely running fishing and fish don't bite anymore and no another um, tangent <laughs> yeah that it, it is but uh, honestly there's so many people that um have gotten in involved in it it's a quick story i tell you about my dad yeah. so my dad's 85 years old he does not like technology doesn't embrace <laughs> it he cannot text me a picture off of his phone <laughs> so and he's gone through some pretty traumatic health issues the last few years but you know battled through some things he's got you know he's in congestive heart failure mm. he's he's diabetic you know he's got a lot of things that that really limit his mobility he doesn't have the ability to go out and fish for great periods he lives on a small private lake that's loaded with bluegill, big ones. And he loves the bluegill fish. He's phenomenal at it. So when we came out with Mega Live, oh, I, yeah. he was like, oh, my God. He's watching all, he watches all the events, right? He's followed it for his whole life. He's like, oh, it's forward-facing sonar. And it's, and I said, yeah. I said, Dad, for bluegills, it's it's the devil. Yeah. Right? I mean, yep. it, it's, it's crazy good. So I put one on a Helix 12 on his, he's got a fishing pontoon set up. And it's got just a redneck target lock. It's just sure. a post where you turn oh, yeah. my hand. Yeah, yeah, a little T-handle, yep. Yeah. And I took him out and showed him, and it took a little while. He said, well, can you set that up? So you just hit the you know, the preset, so it just automatically sets it and showed him how to adjust the range and go out there. And it, it took him just a little bit to understand what he's looking at. Now, oh, he yeah. wouldn't fish without it. It's like, <laughs> it's the greatest thing ever. You know, That's I mean, amazing. You, just, you don't even make a cast until you go around. And he mm -hmm. goes out, catches 6, 8, 10, bluegill enough for for dinner a good night, dinner yeah. and you know it goes out for a couple hours because if he goes all day he's you know it's just too tiring for yeah. him so so it's changed you know i mean look even for a, an 85 year old man it, yeah. it's changed so, the way he fishes too yeah well it and it's made it enjoyable and it it's made it to where it's very doable makes it him. makes it a little easy a little easier if you understand yeah, no, what it, it, but he understood it it isn't you know as well as i do it is not magic no you, there's no, no guarantee yeah, no for sure to, you still gotta be you gotta around find that magic air listen yeah. i was fishing out here today on yeah. st Clair, and i had a lot of them follow that yeah that didn't yeah. didn't want to bite yeah. just because but it is uh it tells you you better you better stop or you yeah. might want to change colors and things like that it's it is that instant feedback that we never knew yeah you know I, if i knew how many followed my crankbait out here before prior to this yeah oh gosh, yeah. yeah you would so. stick around that spot a little longer or you would leave quicker yeah, like it helps it, you make those calculations change colors correct change, change baits yep. change techniques yeah yep. so it's it's made me a, a better fisherman yeah so um it is a, i know a lot of people don't like watching sure the, especially the smallmouth tournaments. oh yeah we don't none of us do yeah it, i mean because yeah. you're just yeah, absolutely you're staring at somebody's back yeah 
catching five pounders yeah. with a fairy wand yeah. and it's it's yeah. not exciting it's you know you know even when there's a live feed on on the hummingbird screen you know you know they've done it with the classic and things yeah. and, and even even then like unless the guy's explaining it like you do on the pro team journal or whatever it is like the audience still doesn't grasp exactly what's going on all they see is looking down and ooh you know yeah. cast that you know you know how it is they, so. they think it's cheating yeah yeah and, right right exactly so you entered the sport in 1990 here we are 33 years later um explain to like some of the younger anglers i mean we see them everywhere high school guys college guys uh pro-am guys whatever it is so back in 1990 through the 90s what um what would you say like sponsor wise um what attributes or assets an angler can possess that was the most valuable thing to possess as an ang professional angler in the 90s and then what's the most uh you know valuable asset an angler could have now in 2023 well sponsors are looking for the same things then as they are now okay. and that's a, that's a return on their investment right so nobody uh sponsors anybody for free yep and what a lot of these young anglers don't realize is if you're going to ask Strike King Lure Company to say, hey, I want $500 or I, I need, you know, I want to get, you know, $1,000 worth of free baits or mm -hmm. whatever, to break even on that deal, it's a, it's a seven to ten time multiplier. Yeah. So you have to make a difference in their business, right? You have to mm -hmm. sell enough product um, to cover it by that much just for them to break even. even. And they're not in business to break even. Mm -mm. So uh, the sponsors, it's easy to get sponsors. What you have to do to get a sponsor is you have to sh show them a business model that they can't refuse. Yep. That's guaranteed a return on their investment. Yep. So if they're going to give you $1,000, you show them how they, you know, you can, what you can do is worth $7,000 mm -hmm. or $10,000. And then they can't say no. And that's, I mean, that's the way that it is. So sponsors are looking for, you know, different things. Different companies are looking for different things. You know, uh, uh, like Ferguson, for instance, they're a big sponsor of Major League Fishing. And what they do is so many of their customers mm -hmm. and uh, their dealers are outdoors people. Yep. So their biggest thing is sponsor is hospitality. They, they want, you know, they bring them to some of the events. Well, we have guys taking them fishing. And that's it. And there's a big value to that yeah. to them as a as a brand. Sure. Um, Coca Cola, you know, I mean, listen, so they don't need more brand awareness. No. Yeah. They yeah. need ways <laughs> right. you yeah. know, to do that. So, you know, Bass Pro Shops, you know, in in the end, it's like, hey, we we got to get customers in the stores. Yep. You know, you know what the Bass Pro Shops experience is when you get in that store. Yep. You, I. I'm sponsored by them and I can't get out of there without spending $500, sure. yeah. you know, I mean, it's and looking at the tank and then, yeah, and then, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're very unique in yeah. that, that they have obviously a big online biz presence, mm -hmm. um, that, that catalog, the, the catalog, man, is something I, I got my first Bass Pro catalog in 1974 and it's wow. still something to look forward to yeah. every single time, you know, every single year. So, but everybody is different in what they're looking for. Mm -hmm. And so many young anglers, they go to somebody and just say, Hey, I, won these tournaments or yes. I'm doing Oof. this and Oof. and you should sponsor me. What you need to do is ask questions to see what they're interested in in accomplishing and how you might be able to help them meet those goals, you yep. know. Never never lead in with, you know, the hey, I just finished this this at the, at the Alabama team trail, you know, my partner and I just finished that, you know, what what is that worth, you know, that's never Well, the the tournament platforms unfortunately are are not what they used to be in that in that sense Bingo. you have to do you, you it's they're just not i mean yeah. the television back in the day in the tnn days yeah you, and you remember it that was, was the game Ro, yeah it was roland martin and hank parker yep. and anglers that's then, how stuff you know, was sold yeah yes. and bass masters and you know i mean there's just bill dance and they just had a, a unbelievable lineup and there was only one network for it to be on TNN. um and then, you know, the ESPN, ESPN era was probably the greatest era in bass yeah. fishing. Yeah, and that's where I grew up. I've, I've yeah. bought I mean, so many crankbaits because of you, so many spinnerbaits because it's, you know, who, you know well, Gary Klein, whoever it is. They yeah. invested so much in all those shows, the loudmouth bass, yep. and, and put so much into bass at the time, B-A-S-S, trying to make it a mainstream sport, and they lost their tail on yeah. it. They, they did. Yeah. But, Never caught on. But what they did do is they, sh they showcased bass fishing and made it, 
like a mainstream sport. Yeah. Right. So that I can tell it was you, a baby, I, they, they thought it was gonna be a big step. It was a baby step. Or, yeah. or yeah. well, they did a lot. I, and yeah. I trust me, I'm a beneficiary of that era. Yeah. Um, you know, I was having a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of great events and won a lot of titles during the that branding. Time. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I, yeah. I went to Bristol multiple times to be on Mike and Mike yep. and first take. And there was no internet. There was no Instagram, no YouTube, no right. other areas to consume yeah. fishing content. It was only through, you know, yeah. ESPN, TNN. Well now television, you know, is so fragmented that yeah. it's hard, you know, I mean, uh, outdoor channel is still a great venue, but yep. I mean, there's. A, a lot of different networks or streaming and just scattered everywhere yeah, yeah. social media yeah. and uh yeah. you know the, everybody's got a youtube channel yes. I mean, it's yeah it's hard to get noticed you know you have to um to start to build a brand now it's it's tough it's very hard because it's, there's no one place to go yeah you know that's a one one question i i wanted to ask you it's whenever he started out what 12 years ago mm -hmm. It was so hard for that sponsorship thing, you know, and then, then, you know, five, six years in is when things started changing a little bit. And then, you know, obviously 2019 on for him, it, he got it even more, but I always wondered because it seems like the budgets are pretty, pretty, um, heavy on like the veteran guys. And then it's harder, you know, they don't, they'll spend six figures with the veteran guy, which they should, right? Because the platform's there for the return like you were talking yeah. about but it, in a sport where you can fish forever how can we make it where the younger guys get just a little bit more of that pie like is it because it's so hard like if you look at basketball you know you you got injuries and people yeah you know they don't play for as long but in our sport well there's no team so you can't yeah. like be involved with a team it's yeah. all individual it's a vi and individual can brand. fish for 30 years and there's hundreds of know? individual brands yeah. out there right now it's very very tough well, you're probably not going to like the answer. But the reality, <laughs> I, 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 I'm used to that. <laughs> the reality of it is, is people are, they're, they're going to spend their money on return. On return. Yeah. And, you know, just like I said, to, if, if I was whatever, Strike King Lure Company, yeah. for mm -hmm. example, brand I've been with for a long time, and you're looking at, you know, sponsoring a new young angler out there, hoping that, he does well enough in a tournament with one of your products mm -hmm. and is smart enough at the time to capitalize on that opportunity Promoting, yeah. Yeah. to do it. That's, That's there's no guarantee. I, I could take that same money, money yep. and, you know, put it into their own, you know, develop on our own message content yep. for the brand yep. and that's what companies do so in a sat in that chair. and you know you're going to get guaranteed return on that guaranteed right. so it's not a gamble right yeah no, it, it, that's exactly what it is mm -hmm. and um so as a young angler you almost have to prove yourself to, yep. to do it and to be honest with you when i started i didn't have a bunch of sponsors mm -hmm. i didn't did start i proved myself and then they came knocking on my door sure. you mm -hmm. know and then it was companies that i was already using their product because that's what i believe so made in. it e or made it easier and yeah. Then, yeah so but the reality of it is is there's no there's no free lunch there's nope. there's no um easy sponsorship to get especially within the industry i mean it's so the bass pro shops and the strike kings of the yeah. world and you know the uh the endemic companies they're overwhelmed with you know 4,000 right. letters coming sure. to them. Hey, well, we want Still. a sponsorship. Yeah. Right. Can you support our charity event and, yeah, and, yeah. and this and that? Where if you got a, you know, the guys that I see that, that really have great re new relationships is if they can work with a, a local brand or these smaller mm -hmm. companies mm -hmm. and just get tied with them. And, and a lot of chances, I mean, I know people, you got to be willing to work. And mm. I, I know a lot of guys that like, hey, I, I'll go and I'll take their customers fishing and, and, you know, I'll wrap my boat with their brand and I do commercials for mm -hmm. them and I help them local locally and, and then earn their way, you know, earn their way up, you yep. know, but you, it's hard to go to a Toyota yep. and either with no leverage, no yeah, nothing, I mean, look, no platform. They're, yeah. They're sponsoring the NFL and yeah. major league baseball yep. and yep. ESP, you know, I mean, they're, they're across, they're sponsoring everything at the highest levels and and they're you know 
looking for big returns on yeah. those investments, and that's just, just the nature of the business. So the reality of it is is nothing's free, yep. and right. nothing comes without hard work, and you know, you, you've you got to find a way. You've got to be creative yep. to, to carve your niche, and I've – you know, a lot of guys have done that over the years. You yeah. look at look at Joe Thomas. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's, he won the Red Man All American way back in the day. And there's a guy that works his tail off. Yeah. Um, it's done all different kinds of things. TV shows. Loves to hunt. He's doing all kinds of extra things. And he's carved out a great career in yeah. the outdoors. But I promise you, he's earned it. Yep. You know. Yep. And not tournament fishing. I mean, outside of tournament he, fishing. He tournament like, fish. Yeah. But, I mean that he used that one win yep to, to slingshot to into, other, shot things, into yeah. other into other things and um that's that's what you you know that's what you see just being a tournament fisherman and and saying well hey i'm i don't want to focus on sponsorship or i don't want to focus on <laughs> that's that's a bad you're dead there's very few people that have ever been able to make that work right and that's yeah prior to the, like the current day i mean nowadays if you don't have a, at, at the very least a youtube channel and a position on MLF tour, Elite Series tour, whatever it is, like, and that's just the start. I mean, that, yeah. you got to work hard on both ends. And you know, I tell the kids all the time. That's the number one question I get asked. I've been in this twelve years now. Don't have the accolades that you do, but th- that's the number one question. Not how how to throw a swim bait, how to throw a big spoon. It's you know, where do I start sponsorship wise? And I always say, make them notice you. Build out a platform for yourself. Where th- whether you're working with the local brands and and these larger brands like Strike King. Um, like Nitro Bass Pro, notice you working hard, and and uh, that's just the start of it. So and yeah, you, you've done a great. You job. have to. Um, my wife is, you know, I mean, brand, image, and likeness. Um, you know, I I'm surprised. It, it's not it's not that hard, you know. Yeah. I mean, because if you're being something that not yourself, yeah, pretty hard after a few years to reinvent that. Sure, you know, so right. I've always tried to be true to. <laughs> To who I am, and um, you know, I've always looked at it, it's like, hey, I I want fans that are uh, four years old to eighty years old. You know, mm-hmm. I want to appeal to, I want to try to be somebody that everybody looks up to and that everybody respects and and everybody trusts. You know, I mean, and uh, that's what we worked hard to do. Yeah, I say we're that. that's, that's Sherry. And yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. And listen, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not by a lot of things that you do and see. They're not by accident. Mm-hmm. It's 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 thought it's planned and um maybe you know i'm not saying we're perfect or we've done everything exactly right but we've done a lot of things right yeah there's um a lot of the spend and marketing you're seeing over the last few years shifting to like the youtubers and stuff are you okay like do you have feelings towards that seeing a lot of those bigger budgets like go that direction and outside of tournament fishing like i'm biased like you guys (laughs) that that i that i think the tournament platforms are um you know they're they're the marquee place and there's still you know the the top level tours the the classic the red crest i mean those are the marquee uh, uh events that most eyeballs are watching and you know if you can get somebody that's there to you know one of your one of your guys to to win that or gals whatever it is yeah. at, at that level um that's the that's the thing but i also do understand you know lose for instance is um Man, they have a a really diverse lineup of, of product, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. that, the mock, that mock the mock stuff, and they're really geared towards the younger generation yep. And, yep. and a lot of kayak uh, anglers and 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 YouTubers, and it's a totally separate market, and yes. it's a big one too. So, I mean, it's just like in anything else, you you want to appeal to everybody, every segment right. of the market, we, and you want to sell your products to to everybody. So you have to. Um, do that at some level you got to have you know marketing money sure in all these other other places like that so i or i think it's important you know i mean yeah i'm a big i'm a big hunter right and you, i look at uh hunting television I, I look at a lot of the shows and stuff there and you it's great to watch an adventure hunter go to alaska and hunt for right a, a moose right. or a, 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 a bear or a doll sheep or the reality of it is, is that is way out of most people's League, it's it's budget. a it's a yeah. fantasy. Yeah. Uh, what most people do is they hunt whitetails and turkey in the so, backyard. Yeah. So the the focus the big focus should be on the on the core part, and then yeah, you you do a little bit of elk hunting, you yeah, might go there. do a little duck hunting or mm-hmm. whatever. But the the main market is 
in in the hunt world, whitetail's king. Yep. It's it's bass. Yep. You know, for in the fishing side, and and yeah, walleye is important, and you know, trout and salmon are are something as but well. It's not the crappie main. is yep. crappie is crappie, but and it's important to be a part of all of it. But bass bass is king. That's the juice. bass fishing is king. Yep. So. Yep. Right. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> okay, so we might as well. It, it wouldn't be the bilge if we didn't, you know, talk about some fun industry stuff. Don't yeah. give me that look, Kevin. Oh, there in, we go. I'm intimidated. <laughs> I've been nervous all day. Um, so the big hot topic right now is kind of cheating, which cheating's been around from what I understand forever, right? You know, or shade, shade, shady, whatever. Not, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I. <laughs> I just I, I've I've been pretty naive over the years, yeah, but okay. yeah, I mean, uh, listen, people kill people for yeah. a thousand bucks, right? Yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. we're fishing for a hundred grand, yeah. and uh, there's a lot of guys out there that are that you know are is desperate. The word desperate. Yeah. Do you desperate. think so? Do you feel like it's worse now than it's ever been in your career? Um. Or has social media brought it I, out? I, th I think, yeah, I, again, I think I've probably been naive. I mean, I yeah. just, I, it, it, integrity is something that it's the only thing you have yeah. as as a person. Yeah. And I, I just never would dream of risking my career, yeah. uh, you know, for one tournament or, sure. or for a finish or or. To do, you know, I, I don't know. I just, I, I, I think, know right from wrong. And I, I grew up in the era with the Larry Nixons and the Danny Browers and the Tommy Martins and the Rick Clons. And you know what? We know, you know who's in, when in your area. And then all of a sudden this guy shows up on the third day of the tournament mm -hmm. or whatever. And and now with social media and they, you can see the pictures on there. And it's, it's disheartening. Yeah. Um, but, and, and it is, you know, I mean, there, I know you're, you're talking about the Cayuga event. Um, I I was pissed. But, yeah. When I well, when I heard and saw what was going on, and because I'm, promise you, I know spawning smallmouth better than anybody. The intent of that rule was you don't catch the same fish twice yep. in the same day. Yeah. And I I mean I've fished through areas where I knew there was four. And you went right past. And and yeah. I've, I if I caught three of them, if I came back and didn't catch the fourth yeah. one, if I come back, I never fished for the other three yeah. again. And and I can tell you, all these other guys know the same thing too. So it, it was super yeah. disappointing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and listen, I'm not I'm not gonna play in the gray area. Like try to read the rule enough times to find to, a to find a, a, a an out. I know what the intent is, and you know, and, and what you know. We're all in the same meetings, and it's like, hey, sure, you you have to show the fish to the official and show that it's hooked in the mouth sight fishing. Well, that's it. My eyes, they don't lie. I, I, <laughs> I, yeah. You know, we all. So yeah, it's frustrating. It was a. I think it was a a, a big learning experience yeah. for the anglers for the, the league. Group, that's the whole group, one. But sure. I can tell you, it's it's at all levels. I don't. Right. Yeah, oh, I absolutely. I mean, it's absolutely. It, I know. I know plenty of people on the on the elite oh, series that, that are. Oh, of living. course. Yeah. If you see yeah. it at that level, you know it's everywhere. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And yeah. and again, uh, just. It, it bothers me that it, it, this things are that way. Where Why do you think it seems like people got so comfortable that they would do something so blatant? Because to a as a tournament angler, I knew it, I watched the whole tournament. I was I knew exactly what was going on. No yeah. one had to tell me. I yeah. was like, whoa. Yeah. I blame social media and the clout that comes with it, man. I really do. I really do. Well, I don't know. It's uh, just a de the desperate thing, you know, or. Or have we Obviously. have we allowed mm -hmm. things over the years, uh, things to get, I, get away with? I lost a lot of respect for for some people for sure, yeah. and not not just that tournament, but I mean just over the last few years. Yeah. Just I, I'm a smart guy, yeah. and uh, right. I know I what's know what's what? right. I know who's been where. I know what's going on day sure. to day. Um, you know, the first day of that tournament, I was boat 35 out of 40. And I was the only, only guy. Uh, I was I, honestly, I was only there was I saw seven people on the south end of the lake. I watched everybody else turn right. Well, somehow oh, yeah. after the first period and I'm leading with 25 pounds, I think people figured it out. And, and so in the next day, it was everyone, everybody. Right. Great. And I, I get it. But, 
you know mm. Mm. so i, I felt asked... that one for you dude i was watching that one the whole time and like you could tell you're down in the south and you could tell by the sand in the background and you're doing your small mouth thing and yeah day two everyone i loaded. asked zona one of the questions because it's something i've always wanted to know and i in our podcast this last one i said you know i know you can see gps so i know from day one to day two you can see everyone's tracks so is it like completely obvious the guys who you know get on social media and then on day two make an adjustment and he's like oh a thousand percent he called them day two heroes how yeah. that you know and he said there's a group of them and yeah. you yeah no i've watched it for yeah. years and years is there so it used to be when you could talk to see when you could talk to other anglers or whatever i mean our our no information rules much stricter than than, than your guys really, yeah and yeah there's the 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 campground oh yeah, oh, yeah. So, yeah. Guys, you know where uh, they didn't catch them the first day and yeah. they're, they're, then all of a sudden it's community yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it's, and that's been you know fishermen love to talk fishing oh yeah it's and true. guys if they have a great day it's hard for them to not mm -hmm. talk and especially tell talk to the roommates and that and of course you know i mean a lot of them a lot of guys work together you know yeah. anyways look at the, like the johnson johnson brothers. bro i was just gonna yeah. say yeah you know i mean I, I mean i they're good friends of mine yeah. i mean yeah and it's it's smart yeah you know? absolutely I mean, two, With... two minds are two guys practicing is better than one yep. and um it's just i've always strived and i've been on every angler advisory board every yeah. group from, from day one yep and and have been through my whole career and i've always fought and worked to try to have a level playing field all i want to do is compete on a level playing field and i've been i've had a lot of tournaments over the years that i've lost to people that got local help sure. you know and even if they did it legally before the off limits right. i mean I, I know it's very easy to see who did and who didn't oh sure. yeah you know I oh mean, yeah and that's just it's it's nothing i've i've just never done that i've always done my own thing i don't fish like other people right sure. and um I've, you I've, couldn't even if you tried like that's i mean you're you got your style I, I, it's yeah. my dna is different yeah. and um uh, yeah it's cost me a, a lot of titles and uh, you know over the years because somebody got you know i mean it's like out here i mean the bottom don't change somebody gives yeah. you the numbers of a rock pile in the they're center there of the forever lake. right yeah yeah and uh it's amazing how guys will just clamor to give up the stuff they've worked their whole life to to yeah. to some top level pro you know i've weird? had lots of people crazy? come to me over the years and, saying oh and, i'd love and to offer help. right yeah. and i just yeah it's not Sorry. my thing yep. you know so zona said that same thing he's he gave a good little story about you and how you, you do it all on your own the hard well the, the you know the hard working way and you never asked no what it. he said was he was offended that you never asked him <laughs> for waypoints yeah. like you thought you were better than him no yeah. yeah no the the thing that i've watched and i've i've I, you know i've done this for 33 years mm -hmm. and i've been around a lot of people and i it's again it's very obvious when you, know. you could get you know help back in the day the guys that did, they relied on it so much that if they got good help and it was timely, you know, before the off limits and things like that, it, it could pay off, but there's no consistency in it. So they were like, you know, they're consistent. Sure. Right. Relying they get, on it too they'd much. Get, yeah. They get burned a lot where, you know, if you go do your own thing, fish, you know, in the moment, yeah. read the conditions, you know, uh, the my, most of my best tournaments are like the first time i've ever been to it that the hardest awesome. thing for me is going to lake gunnersville that i've been to seven million times, times. Yeah. yeah and you just remember i mean i've caught them in this bay in this creek yeah. and this, you know and it's and you it, have that thought like okay i'm gonna fish the moment i should be fishing this area but on the way to that area you're like well back in 06 at yeah, one spot it, and it, then it, there goes 30 45 it, minutes of your day yeah and then all of a sudden it's three o'clock and you don't have what you have yeah that's yeah well and, or even in practice you know i mean our our you know two-day practice is it it goes quick quick you know, yeah three days you know i've i've fished under every format every yeah. style every point system yeah. every uh, you know every cut uh mega bucks yeah, you know yeah. i mean all the different kind of things and uh three days of practice that i always almost always found the main stuff on the first day yeah but having that third day cushion to be able to look for secondary stuff yeah. and back up so if you have a blow day like we had last week where you know i could have find a little something back yeah, i could have yeah. found something on the other side or even a heavy largemouth area or something yeah, yeah whatever yeah, you know yeah. just it you know the longer you give these guys yeah to figure it out they're going the to. more they're going to figure it out 
yeah. especially this day and age. I mean, with the technology that we have, I mean, if you'd have told me in 1990 when mm -hmm. I started that I'd have five graphs on my boat, <laughs> you know, two Raptors and Mega 360 and Mega Live, I'm like, you're, you know, what do you, yeah. you need all that for? But are you a daylight to dark guy in practice? Yeah, pretty you much. Said, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you have to. So, you know, the first nowadays, day, right? The first day of our practice, we're you know we're allowed thirty minutes before till okay. thirty minutes after, and I'd, I I try I don't like to be out there in, dark, in the dark, yeah. especially on an unfamiliar place. I don't want to be able to see. So, but but sunrise to to sunset is pretty much that first day, and then we have to be off by six, five or six, depending gotcha. on the time of the year. Yeah, and um, yeah, you you got to put you know you have to put with two days you got to make the most of yeah all those all those minutes yeah i feel like so we had rick clun on not too long ago and he was talking about how you know when he started out you know on a windy day or a foul weather day there'd be like two or three dudes out there and nowadays it's like it don't, when, matter. It don't matter right and i feel like you help like with you know you're you're you know racking up all these accolades and things i feel like guys are pushing each other further and further you look at tiger woods right tiger woods was hitting the gym all the time hitting balls every yes. single day and now all these guys are starting to hit the gym and get, you know, and, and get in better physical shape and things like that. And it's kind of the same thing in fishing where guys keep just pushing each other and pushing each other and pushing each other. And it's now a, they're all daylight to dark guys. It's it's a true professional sport. Yeah. You you have to because everybody else is. Yes, you, if, if you don't, everyone you, else is. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're getting passed by and um, you have to put the work in. Yeah. And, um, you know, I can tell you that just like today, I, I'm out there and it's blowing 20, 25 out of the north, and and it's, you know, I'm five-footers out there. I, if I didn't have to be out there, I, I, <laughs> if I could have picked my day, but I had this thing, I had this wow. scheduled, so it's like a tournament, you know? I mean, just like yesterday, I, same same thing. But if you're, I, I was the only trailer at the boat ramp, you know? Wow. There's, nobody else is going to go on that day. <laughs> no. So... Man, that's uh, on the the whole cheating thing and stuff like what can we do like is there fixing it or are we just it's just kind of how our sport is and it's hard to really hold people accountable because it seems super disrespectful um, as competitors to your the other people who are paying their entry fees and are going through the same thing for you to for for guys to look for those gray areas right while other people are taking it on the chin and, and trying yeah. to do it, you know, the, um, I, I see it in, I see it in NASCAR. They've made a, they've made a big shift this year. Um, uh, yeah. Well, the last couple of years it's, yeah. it's been to, you know, I mean, always in the past, it was like, you know, mm -hmm. applauded if a crew chief found a, yeah. a, a way Shad around, a Shad gray area, yeah. a way around the Chad Kadaus, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did yeah. Did, yeah. You know, they, hey, like, now, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they, as he che yeah, they cheated yeah. and yeah, yeah. figure it out. And, but you know, they, that, that perception or that, that's not acceptable in society today. Mm -hmm. And it's right. not acceptable in, in my sport either. Yep. And it, it, it burns me up. I mean, I'm telling you, I've, it, I've talked to a lot of the guys on our tour and, and again, it's um, it, the majority of the guys are, are out there and uh, it, it's very obvious. You can tell, I mean, just, I, I just, don't, I don't think that way. No, I'm not tr trying to push the envelope and maybe I, maybe I'm wrong for that, but um, cheating is a interesting word because I mean, blatantly cheating, you know, there's getting DQ'd for your life vest infraction or something small, and then there's, there's yeah, getting you, you popped for unknowingly right. blew a no wake zone. You should yeah. get sure. penalized or whatever. You gained sure. a time advantage, but sure. that's not a DQ or anything. But if you, you know, if you're getting waypoints three days before the tournament starts, cheater, a cheat. That's that's. Yeah. That's cheating. Yeah, plain and simple. Yeah. And I got nothing DQ for, for, for that yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Have have over the years. Um, uh, and you don't have to answer this. I, we don't, I don't, we know how Bassmaster works, but not how MLF works. But are, when things happen, are they public about it? Like we've been really pushing Bassmaster to be a lot more transparent, kind of like NASCAR started. Mm -hmm. We, we, we push the, yeah, with the same way. I mean, I think they, um, 
you know, you have to be in this day and age. Right. Yeah. And NASCAR is the same way. Yeah. I mean, they never used to accountability. And now they're actually showing the parts and yeah. stuff. Yeah, they now. they do that, and they're and they're you know, and they're also given the t- telling the exact penalty. And, yeah. And yeah. Things you know for it. Um, it, it's not. It's it's not good, right? right? It's a it's a black eye for the sport, mm-hmm. right? Um, and nobody wants that, you know. I mean, when you're looking to have, you know, Madison Avenue companies come and and be a part of your sport, right? They don't want to be a part of 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 that. Any of know? that. Um, I'll, they, prom- I'll promise they you. They say you're a bunch of rednecks, and that's what you know. I'll yeah. promise you that that a lot of of high level sponsors. We're looking real close yeah. and asking a lot of questions yeah. after after what happened, and and we're watching real close how the league handled it, handled, and, yeah. and we'll continue to going forward because you don't want to have your brand associated with that. I don't. Yeah. Right. I don't want to be. You know, the the thing that really bothers me there is that was one of the best events I've ever had for total weight. I caught over a hundred pounds. It's oh. the first tournament. In four days of competition, I caught uh, that I've caught uh, over a hundred pounds on. I fished a lot of great ones yep. of smallmouth, mm-hmm. and nobody even thinks about it or or would, you know. Yeah. Damn. You know, it, it's not an accomplishment that that I can be proud of because yeah. of this asterisk uh, yeah, that went along. The cloud, with, yeah, the dark cloud, right? Yeah. So, and Bad deal. yeah, I, it. I'm still mad about yeah. it. There's no doubt. Yeah. It, you know, I get it. I I understand the legal aspects of it. I understand the the legal aspects of of polygraph and and how it works. Was that just, when you say legal aspects, like how the rule is written, like the yeah, gray area? It, yeah, that... exactly. How the rule is written and what is you know, we all knew. I, I'm right. you're you in know, a meeting. You know. Yeah. I mean, I know. Yeah. And yeah. But it's, the way the rule was written, technically, it was legal what occurred, I guess. <laughs> in, in some instances, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, but there, there's mul- there was a lot multiple different things um, sure. that yeah. were in question that yeah. they right. that they uh, they tested guys for, and but again, you know, I mean, uh, I seen rule violations on video, and why do we need a polygraph? when i can see clearly see it clearly yeah. see yeah. it so yeah. but what you know yeah so i'm not the i'm not the guy yeah <laughs> not to get too far in the weeds right because you've always been super professional and i you know your wife might kill me if you know i you know cause anything bad but um so becker won aoy he was kind of one of the guys that you know people questioned and i heard he did want to apologize whatever it doesn't whatever let's say he did want to apologize and own up to it and he knew he made a mistake well now he's got this aoy trophy like how does someone like becker move on from here yeah. with kind of all these rumors flying around yeah. things like that but he's won the aoy and if he wanted to make it right he could like how what would you tell someone in those shoes who's like yeah. conflicted now i can't speak for yeah. Matt Becker or any anybody else. I just I just know how I do things, mm-hmm. and um, I I sleep just great at night, mm-hmm. knowing, yeah, knowing yeah. how I do. And right, good sure. answer. Yeah. Yeah. and that's you know, yeah. I, I just again I don't sure. you know, I don't work that way, and um, I've never never been that. You know, I, I <laughs> if somebody's ever questioned my integrity, I I haven't heard about it. Sure. And, sure. Um, that's what we talked about with Zona. I said, you know, we haven't been around a long time, but I've never heard anyone yeah. who I respected question your integrity, right? Of course, you know, people make up stuff on social media, but oh, that yeah, just happens. Time, but yeah. people that I trust and stuff, never once have I heard them question the way yeah. you do things, which as the leader of our sport, whether you chose to be or not. Oh, I've, I've know, had all the rumors, you know, be, oh, he, he gets waypoints, he gets help, he does this right. or that. You know, how could you win all these, you know, sure. do this term at Kentucky Lake, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And listen. Be, whatever you, yeah sure. exactly yeah. show me the yeah the proof yeah. right yeah because yeah, yeah. you know in your heart you yeah, do it I the know. right I, way I, I, you I, busted your ass side imaging all those years are you kidding me you're the only yeah. one out there doing that yeah. th- through those years well it's just it is what it is yeah. you know sure. um, and it's always going to be like that this sport you know they they deal with it in nascar martin deals with it all the time you know <laughs> 
Oh, I, yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, Truex is a really good friend of mine. Yep. Yep. and uh, I thought he was going to win today. Yeah. He, yeah. he um, man, I feel bad for him in a lot of cases because uh, yeah. he's, he's the good guy. Yep. I mean, yep. he always, you know, I mean, he's the one guy that doesn't have a bunch of enemies out there. That's right. And, but I, I've talked to him plenty. Yep. I mean, you know, he'd tell you straight. He yep. knows. I mean, they all know. They yeah. know each other. Who's who's, who's going to run who's, through who, you to win? Who, who who's going to rate? And it's the same. It's just kind of the same in fishing. I've I've treated that over the years. Yeah. You know, he he'll tell you I'm going to race this guy the way you know the way he races me. I'm going to yep. race him. Yep. You know, if he's going to do me, if he's going to knock me out of the way in in the corner on the final lap to get around me, then I'm going to give him the same thing back. And but like but anybody that's that you know that's racing him with respect, he's you know he's. Finished second plenty of times, yeah, because he didn't want to bump somebody or move yep. them out of the way to to do it. Where other guys don't even think twice about it. Yep, and yeah. it's the same way. I mean, over the years, the way I've fished around people in tournaments, yep. if we're in the same area, yep, you know, could be respectful. So I tell you, this past week at Saginaw Bay, Tharp, Tharp. I mean, Randall and I go way back, and there's very few people that would have done what he did. Yeah that day i mean and what exactly did he do so he um we we we're in different groups mm -hmm. right and i i fished the same you know set of rock piles a little rock ridge the first day mm -hmm. i fished it the first period and was gone and if it's second day i fished the first period and, Bang, was gone. and gone yeah and then um he i don't know when he'd fish it but he said he found him in there in practice he got a couple of bites and he was saving it till the end yeah and the day before on friday he caught a couple of big ones late there and in you know was way up in the knockout round he was in fourth place or whatever well i go out first right yeah and i go right to what i think is the juice juice spot mm -hmm. and i'm just sitting there waiting and he he eases up on the way up there because we had the trailering policy oh, right, right. he called me said man when he seen me have that direction i said i know he knew he, I, he said i know you're on the same spot i'm fishing he said I, i'll just bet you money i said well randall i said if if we are dude i wouldn't be happier to fish around anybody wow other than you said you know, that, than, yeah. than you i said yeah. hey look I just, you just you, you know he shows respect yeah, yeah. i said we'll, we'll we'll be fine yep. you know i mean if it if it happens to be that way so i pull out there and i'm just spot locked waiting mm -hmm. and uh he rolls out there and he, he comes up to me and he's like man i knew it he said i this is you know this is where i fish and he said i just want to let you know that i i'm, I'm definitely gonna i want to fish here he said but i'll give it to you for the first period That's awesome and he but said to start the second period i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna come back here he said i think there's enough fish here that we can both make the championship round and you know if that's the case and you know what it's all and i said randall I said that's a thousand percent. I appreciate it very much. I said you can pull up ten feet from me. You can do. You can fish anywhere you that's want. Awesome. Do whatever. And so um, you know, he took off, and I mean, I caught eighteen or nineteen pounds that right out the bat off the first period. You know, out of that area, and um, you know, he came in later, and I let him have the whole end where you know where he wanted to fish, and and just tried to find something new. You know, around there and. Um, you know, he just ended up not having a good day. And it, it, it was weird, you know, because the next day I never got a bite there yeah, either. Right. And so it's it's like they were there and then they moved. Yeah. And just, they just left. Did the whole when small the, mouth when, thing. When the wind picked up, they just, they were gone. So. But you touched on a real important thing but there. Like that's integrity. Integrity. Correct. And communication. Like yeah. you guys had a pass and everything good. You guys were cordial. You know, crack a uh, crack a, a beverage, or, you know, at the campground afterwards or whatever it is. But then also communication, like communicating. Well, that's have, the biggest thing. It, it's funny. I mean, last year we fished around each other like a lot. It seemed like what every are you doing, event. What are you doing flipping up there? Well, <laughs> you, you know, you do what so, you got to yeah, do. Yeah, right. So, I mean, we did. We fished around each other a lot. Yeah. And um, again, even when you're doing that, it's it's about being respectful. Yeah. I mean. You see these le ledge tournaments. So I, I love Kentucky Lake, right? Right. I, I like Pickwick. I like that, but anymore, I hate it because yeah. we've taught. I, first off, I've taught a lot of people you how sure to do have. it. Sure have. You taught it. And yeah. the Lake Master is so good. Yeah. Now that you can just pick out the spots. Yeah. Now, I yeah. mean, people know, and I mean, the these guys just ruthless I, roll up there like. They put the hood on. They put yeah. the sun hood on yeah. and stare at their electronics. Don't even say, "Hey, Kevin, 
or hey, whoever, you know, they just. Yeah, I, I don't. Are you concerned with, um, cause you're leaving, you, you represent integrity, a Rick mm-hmm. Kwan represents integrity and I don't know how much longer. Are you concerned that where our sport's at, what you're leaving is, is not, not. The, the anglers have to, they have to set the standard for integrity. It's you you have to with your own competitors. I mean, that, it's always been that way. And we've had, you know, people in the past. Denny Brower was a great advocate. Yeah. You know, I mean, I mean, I feel like he would have speak his mind. Yeah, you know? he would have kicked someone's ass. But I feel yeah. like we don't yeah. have that sort of. Biffle was the same way. Biffle, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. Right. you know. Um, but yeah, I can tell you, I've talked to lots of anglers in in the last uh, month, and, and actually, on both tours. I mean, I've had right. a lot of sure. people. I've got sure. a lot of friends still there. You know, I mean, I have a ton of friends at at Bass still. Um, at all levels, you know, mm-hmm. not just anglers, sure. but staff. Oh and, yeah, uh, media people, mm-hmm. you know, JM and, yeah. and that, and uh, yeah, I I get it. It's it's not. Hey, listen, it's it's MLF, it's it's bass, it's NPFL, it's, it's fishing, you know, it's tournament fishing, it's, it's BFLs, it's yeah. it's at all, it's clubs, it's yeah. it's all of them. You know, I mean, um, part of the part of it, I think, is this new era of of young high school and college anglers, yeah. the way they were brought up, yep. uh, the way they fast tracked their way, getting help from yep. boat captains and people yeah, taking that, them out. See, that's a different spin too. Yeah, Absolutely, it's just, you know, you know, a lot they're of these, given a lot. They right. are given a whole lot, right? And yeah. yeah, that's you know, you see, you see some of that coming up, and that you know, it's not a good approach to life, even right. I no, mean, so you got to work for what, what you know your take home. Exactly. So I mean, a, a, a really good feel good story I'll yeah, tell you yeah. is so Marty Robinson's a good friend of mine. Uh-huh. Roomed with him, you know, Casey, Ashley, yep. uh, Jonathan, and I. We we pretty much have roomed together for the whole Bass Pro Tour. You know, where we can find a house, we we do. Well, I've watched his boys grow up, yep. Mitchell and Marshall. Yep. And I mean, those boys have got the gift. They've got the passion, you know. They put the effort in. They live, breathe, uh, everything. Day to dawn to dark, they want to bass fish. When they when they'd show up in an event, they're finding a pond. And they've and they've fished through the. They've the, learned the, the all ver- around yeah. the country. Yeah, they've traveled around yep. and various so, tournaments so and, and Marshall and, earned his way yeah. to the Bass Pro Tour this year. So. Oh wow! Really yes. already? Yeah. So oh my god! He he fished and uh, and he earned. I mean, he had a heck of a year. Whew. And so he'll be on the Bass Pro Tour with Marty next that? year. And Mitchell won the high school, you know, the Bass national, Master. Yeah, the Bass right. Master High School. Oh, that's right. The I same week. That. The same week. And that's I can awesome. tell you, those boys were brought up to figure it out in right. their own. I mean, there's a lot of people around their home state that think, oh, that, that Marty's putting them on them or Casey's putting them on them. They have gone out there and learned the work in. how to you know, use yeah. forward facing sonar or how to throw a frog or yeah. flip or a you know, wacky rig or, you know, throw a jerk bait or whatever it is. They've, they've put the time and the effort to, to, to do it the hard way. And you watch when, when both those boys end up on tour, cause they both right. will. Right. They'll be able to adapt and the, the, they survive. will, they won't be inconsistent. They will be earning, earning right. their keep. Yeah. They won't yeah. be inconsistent. Yeah. They'll, they'll be, they learned know, everything firsthand. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, time, mm-hmm. experience, time on the water. They, you know, you can watch a lot of stuff on YouTube, mm-hmm. and you can f- learn things, and you can f- learn a little bit about smallmouth. But until you've gone out there and experienced this lake, it, Shoot. it, yeah, you, know, you know what I mean. Yep. It, it, you got to learn the hard. You're not gonna yeah. go win the first time yeah. because you smallmouth are different, right? Yep. yep. And so, or spotted bass at, yep. at Hartwell Lanier. or Lanier. Yep. You know, I mean, it's just it's different. Florida. You know, Okeechobee's different than yep. than the Potomac River, the Tide, and the James River, and the California Delta. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've all been through that learning yeah. curve, you know, and and there's no substitute for it. And yeah, they've obviously Marshall's got a ton to learn. I'm not saying he's going to go out there and win AOI, but look at Elton Jones Jr. Sure. You know, I mean, um, you know, I look at a lot of these kids that have grown up, you know, around professional fishing. They're their whole life and and they're having a lot of success uh you know i mean laker howell i mean it's yeah it's uh stephen brownie did, did jackson and nicholas ever say dad i want to i want to be a professional fisherman you know um 
Jackson is he's a chef in Nashville. Yeah. So oh, cooking nice. is cooking is Heck his passion. Yeah. Nice, good. Uh, but Nicholas, he's you know, they didn't at a younger age, but now it's he's, good. he's into it. You oh, know? oh really? Yeah. But he's you know, he's fishing tournaments around yeah. here like to you know, today uh he he's running uh he was running camera boat for oh, us nice. too. And I mean he knows he's a great great guy. I mean he does film and production and yeah. stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he knows he's he's fishy, he, right? Yeah. So he knows he when knows to be ready capture. and he yeah, knows yeah. what's about to yeah, go yeah, down yeah, yeah, and he yeah. knows he knows what to yeah to, when he needs to be shooting and when yep. he doesn't need to be and um and he's fishing a lot of tournaments, you know, around here. But yep. gosh, I hope he doesn't want to do it. I was just gonna <laughs> ask. I, I asked Rick Clun the same thing, you know, your son River, you know, uh you know, would you recommend or or if your son came up to you and said, Dad, I think I'm gonna be a professional bass fisherman, would you what would you say? And of course he said, No, sir. <laughs> yeah. In well, this day and age, you know. I, I'm gonna support my kids in whatever, whatever they want to do, but yeah. uh, you know, he, he's lived it way closer than most anybody else. Right. I mean, he knows how hard it is and the the sacrifices that you have Smart to make kid, and yeah. the, and what it takes. Yeah. You know, I mean he's watched it close. He 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 knows me better than ninety nine percent of the world, you know, and um but he, he does love to tournament fish and, and he's definitely been pretty successful That's around awesome, home. Man. So yeah, very cool. So he usually asks this question. I'm sure he's gonna ask it to finish it to wrap up, but I, I have a version of that question, then you can ask yours. Um, so what would you tell, because you haven't really passed the torch to anyone, I feel like, but we've got the wheelers and the Polonics in this world. What is your advice to them with the state of the industry right now? What can they do to get this thing back on track? Because in a sense, this that's what everyone looks at those two or and a few others at, maybe, as yeah, leaders. Maybe three, yeah. Yeah. Um I've I've really seen, you know, Jacob especially really take a leadership role the last couple of years. He's really invested in it. He's involved in uh a lot of you know of the rules talk and uh mm -hmm. and in the format talk and things with the league and production and you know, he's obviously um, uh, you know, he's out there shooting a lot of video and he, he i mean he puts the work in there's mm -hmm. a guy that works his tail off pollen same way right and they you, that's the future of the sport mm -hmm. is you have you the, it, like i said earlier the anglers have to take it into their own hands right. to set the expectations about integrity right and it's just plain and simple yeah and if if you're going to tolerate the the dang nonsense and monkey business, yep. then it's going to, it's, uh, it's not going to bad path. It's yep. a, it, it is, you know, I mean, and personally, I, I, I wouldn't tolerate it. Yep. You know, I, I've, I have fought it, uh, my whole career yep. at, at different levels, you know, I mean, from, you know, the no information stuff yeah. and, and things like that. It's, it's hard to police. Yes, right. Right. Um, but in the end, the integrity should be set you know, needs to be set by the competitors and, yeah. and, and just, you know, the, the league shouldn't tolerate it. The, the anglers, you know, shouldn't tolerate it at all. And, um, and you you'll, know. you'll still have input on thir certain oh, things, of course. I, I obviously. Mean, right? Yeah. Well, I've shoot. I'm, so, yeah. I'm, I'm uh, advisory board. Yeah, owner, I'm not, uh, owner, yeah. I'm yeah. not leaving. Yeah. Right? Of course. I'm, yeah. I'm, yeah. I'll, Uncle, I'll, Uncle Kevin's me, be, sticking around. Yeah. I'll be watching. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. I follow all the, I follow it. Yeah, it's my, it's, my whole life. Yeah. 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 So, but I can't be, um, you know, I can't be an advocate if people don't, people don't want it. Right. Right. Yeah. To be that way. And th th this is definitely, I think, um, in a, you know, to turn a negative into a positive, I, I think it's brought a lot of awareness to yeah. it. And, and there's a lot of the, a lot of the guys on, on our tour, at least, that are not going to tolerate it yeah, anymore and good. are just are going you know we just gotta we gotta hold hold ourselves to a high standard yes i think we should. have to have, across I mean, the board yep i i think our sport is really really special compared mm -hmm. to and i'm not in the nfl and i'm not nascar yeah, yeah. and things like that but I've, I've been around a lot of other professional sports and a lot of other professional athletes and i i think what we have is truly special and what makes it that is the people is the yeah is the people and that's the hard part for me is going to be you know 
all the, I mean, you spent so much time on the road. Mm -hmm. it, it's like second family, right? It's, it's the, the, the other competitors, it's the staff, it's the media people, it's the production people. Yeah. I mean, you don't, we all know them really day well. In and day out, sure. Yeah. I mean, and that part I'm definitely going to, I'm going to miss. But, you know, the good part is, is I've, I've got a couple tournaments I'm qualified for for next, next year, year. So, yeah. so I don't got to go like cold turkey. Yeah. And, and I know that um, going forward that I'm going to be working every classic expo and Red yeah. Crest expo and Bass Pro Shop Fun. Fishing Fair <laughs> and, and that, um, which, you know, I, I enjoy. And, and I'll look forward to, to seeing everybody at, at those, uh, you know, awesome. especially the guys that that I, I have, you know, long time relationships with, you know, uh, but I'll be out there. Don't, yeah, that's and I'll awesome. be and I listen, I, I understand um, the, you know, the role I've had in the sport mm -hmm. and uh, and I don't take it lightly. You know, I, I, I still want to be a great ambassador for fishing and for conservation and not just fishing but tournament fishing i yeah. mean that's my heart and soul and yeah i want i want to see things go in the right direction and you know the the competition between the two leagues has made everyone better and yeah. it's created a lot of opportunities that weren't there i On mean both sides both leagues for are the full. whole sport the whole sport the, the, both leagues are full there's you know yep. there's, the there's demand for those spots has never been greater yeah and so you know you can say what you want but yep, yep. Uh, um, it, there's never been better opportunities for mm -hmm. young anglers than there is today yep it's, at every level too it, like, it's to never been it better than yeah. what it is right yeah. now so i know you're saying before like oh what about do bigger sponsorship pie for the young guys well right they didn't have there was a no lot, pie for uh, there was, anybody back right, then right? yeah there was very little there was very little uh chance sure. and now there's opportunity there. Yeah. If if you could make one change in tournament fishing with the way it is right now, doesn't matter which league, any league, is there something you would add or change? The the biggest thing that I am concerned about for the future of of competitive fishing is the conservation aspect because mm -hmm. we're putting a lot more pressure on these lakes. Um, there's so many more. I mean, you look at Sam Rayburn and see how many high school tournaments, yes, college tournaments jackpot tournaments uh elite whatever bf i mean just it's just they're getting harder they're, to catch they're, over there they're, it, it, well it's smaller it, too. it's yeah. tough on them yep and you know we we have to do better i mean even at the st lawrence is yeah. the same way you have summer tournaments up there yeah it's it's not good for them yeah yeah and you know those fish are not two years old they don't no. go fast no. so we're not getting more lakes we're not getting more water we have to um We've, you know, to me, the future of competitive fishing for sure is catchway release. Yep. We've got to find a way to be able to do that across the board, across the board, as fair at, as, at, fair as possible at, at all levels, and right. ensure there's no cheating yep. and no monkey yep. business. So, you know? Okay, so then that's my question, though, right? Like, we got monkey business, like blatant in front of us. Yeah. So it's well, just such te a technology hard... will catch up to it because right. just like I mean. 10, 15 years ago, I never would have dreamed we'd be live streaming. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's you know. definitely the opportunity to put cameras in every boat at yeah. all times, and, you know, with and, GoPros and things of that nature. And a switch it is. I mean, l listen, there's um, college fishing has, or, is, you know, changed it, but kayak fishing is the one. I mean, they, they do catchway sure. release. But what about, you know, the weigh-ins? Because we've seen the fans still love them. The fans are still yeah. showing up to Bassmaster. So that's like the hard part. I see the catchway release. I see where yeah. the good is. But I also, like, when I was a kid watching you and everyone, yeah, when y'all pull I, those I, fish out, that's what get, like that's what makes the hair on my arm stand up and want to be a part. And that's huge to what Believe me, there's, done. I'm sure that, that there's people in, in all the leagues trying to figure out. Where's that balance? That, yeah, You're right. That, you know, wh how do we, how do we do things to draw a crowd? The, the reality of it is, is sponsors like Toyota for, and Bass Pro Shops, they're, you know, it really doesn't matter to them if there's 3,000 people at a weigh-in or there's 6,000 people at a mm -hmm. weigh-in, right? They want to have 150 or 200,000 people that watch the event, that mm -hmm. see right. the event, that get that messaging. Right. Um, you, think, it, you don't think that activation in person, though? No. Especially so, on the Toyota side? No, it is important. It's very important. It, it, it all matters. But to get 
six thousand people at a weigh in, it costs a lot of money sure, sure. to get a hundred thousand eyeballs on television. A lot cheaper. It's, it's yeah, yeah. yeah, but all of it matters, and yeah. it's part of that experience. Um, that's why Johnny Morris is so successful. I mean, sure. you walk into a Bass Pro store, it's an experience, experience right? A thousand percent. So that matters, and I mean, he is you know, been able to, or I say they, have been able to um, change retail. I mean, the model in retail is is not brick and mortar for right. a lot of no, people. No, of course. Like, but for Bass Pro, it, that it's their experience. They've, they've made it, mm -hmm. you know, special and unique. And um, and that's that's what we, you know, that, there's got to be a balance there sure. to, to figure that out because it's really important for fans to – to be in touch, get this, you know, I mean, get that experience. Uh, oh yeah. yeah. I mean, to, to get an autograph yeah. and mm -hmm. to, um, you know, to go through there to the, to the Toyota exhibit and play those games yeah. and look at those cars. Yeah. And I mean, play with it, the shifter. Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> and to see fish too. Yeah. I feel like not that we need five zillion, 5,000 of them coming across the stage, but seeing those fish, yeah. those kids, that's a, a huge memory, yeah. you know? Yeah, you know, there's there's got to be a balance to be able to, and now with technology to to yeah. show highlights from the day and things like that, and they mm -hmm. do. I mean, honestly, yeah, sure. uh, way more people watch it live than mm -hmm. than oh, come yeah. to an event. Oh, definitely. And you know, they've been real smart to pair weigh-ins with festivals and concerts right. and things like that. I mean, everybody does. I mean, NASCAR yep. does it, right? Yeah. You, that you, TTBC was amazing back in the day. The yeah. Bass Fest, that was so fun. It, it, yeah, I mean, those those kind of things are are really important. So it's it's a total package, and I think as a as a as a sport, we you know we can't be so focused and think that oh, all we need is fishing right, right. yeah you yeah. know i mean that, it's a formula that that y'all are constantly playing with bass is constantly playing with that formula yeah. of you know everybody everybody is you yeah. know you got it's a fireworks show yeah, and yeah, it, yeah. whatever you, this a little bit of that yeah every every major sport is battling you know yeah. i mean major league baseball is a, the nhl yeah. and golf whatever yeah. how do you get more fan engagement yeah. fan involvement because that is a way, you know, and NASCAR is the same way. I, I became a NASCAR fan because I got to meet some of the guys sure. and fish with them. Yeah. But when I went same to a race the first time, it changed it for me. Sure. Right. right. And, same for him. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's the it's the same thing. So yeah. there's there's definitely a balance there. Um, you know, there's there's no doubt. And yeah, I think everybody's trying to figure out the right mix. Yeah, I, I'd say on my end, uh, the live well side of things, I think that I did gain a respect for fish growing up, trying to keep them alive in a live well. <laughs> like, uh, honestly, so. you know, just like that sort of interaction. I know it seems like nothing, but I still think uh, well, in the aspect of conservation, like teaching people how to keep fish yeah. alive, like there's something there. But No, no doubt. And, and you know, as a license holding angler, mm -hmm. we're allowed to in right. most states. Sure. It's we, written in. We're for allowed a to kill five. Yeah. Right. You yeah, can yeah. take five home and flay them. Yeah. Well, obviously, none of us want to do that. We want to make sure that those fish are returned back in the lake. Especially and, the five biggest yeah, fish. Yeah. yeah. You know? If no, no doubt. But nobody wants to, to kill them. But it it is having an impact on fisheries. Yeah. And that's something that that's all I'm saying is we we've got to find a way to address that yeah. in the future. Yeah. So that sounds like that's going to be the focus mixed with some media delivery over the next few years for you. And that's, well, yeah, we'd love I'm, to see that from you, man. I mean, that's, uh, I, like I said, I, I grew up watching you and, and all the protein journals and, uh, you know. Uh, I'd just like to hear your secrets that maybe you never told the world because they were like your advantage on the water. <laughs> I want a few of those bait modifications. I don't even know if he has like any that. left. Man, he gave up a lot of goods over know, the years. Yeah. He's got to he, You know what? Live, you can't hide anything. Sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, you, yeah. you can't. You're Everyone, talking about live coverage. Not live coverage. Yeah, yeah, live coverage, yeah. Yeah, yeah live coverage. Um, you, yeah. you know, you watch a guy fishing, you can see how he's, you know, you watch Brett Height. Yeah. How he's With throwing a chatterbait. Chatter yeah. you know, oh, I mean, yeah. You watch Bobby Lane punching mats, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever. It's true. You, whatever it is. Uh, guys that are really good at a certain technique. Uh, Aaron Martins, you know, yeah. one, of, one of my favorite people all yeah. time. I mean, just to watch Aaron, I mean... Nobody has 
done more with a drop shot than, yep. than Aaron. I yep. mean, he right next to takeoff most of the times, just pull off and just well, yeah, whatever. Up. I mean, yeah. but he he would throw it in unconventional places. Yeah. I mean, he won at Champlain throwing a drop shot for largemouth in the grass and, and, and weed. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't we don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, that live you see everything, mm -hmm. and uh, and that's that's what people you know want. I mean, it's really helped. I mean, back in the day, I would have huge flotillas of people right. following me, especially yeah. like Kentucky Lake or Gardnersville. But now they can watch live. Yeah. <laughs> so you have a lot less of them. The ones that are out there, some of them are, you know, true fans, but Hardcore. some of them are out there just trying to find your exact spots or yeah. whatever, too. Or, yeah. But that, you're, you're that's, to have that's to not new. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, it, yeah. But all in all, you know, you just you want to have passionate fans. If you got passionate fans, you're, good. you're gonna have a a, a a great sport. Yeah. And we have a lot of passionate and fans. You've, yeah, and you've yeah, and in big part because of you and, and Well I'm a fan and first. The, and, I, yeah, I, yeah. I know yeah, we all yeah. are. You yep. I mean it's what we I, I live it, I love it, I watch it, I follow it. Um, you know, it's it's intriguing to me. Um it's crazy. It's my thirty third year on tour and I still learn so much every event. <laughs> every time that's what's it's cool crazy. about fishing you know it's it's always evolving i think i'm learning more now than i ever have ever have wow awesome. well why don't you share that knowledge with like media content over the next few that's, years as you're pumping that stuff plan. out yeah because we're gonna we're I gonna stay glued to, to you man now, yeah that's amazing you know? <laughs> that's awesome kevin so as we're wrapping up here man I, I really appreciate it know you're a very busy man and you're filming again tomorrow out here on the lake but uh before we let you go here give us some uh just basic life advice man 33 years on tour you're you're a dad you're an awesome husband you got a great family you know avid outdoors man what have you learned over the last 33 years on tour i mean give us some some life advice well um on the back of my truck i've got a little motto that's I, it's all about attitude mm -hmm. and you know the bottom line is is if you go out there and it and it's been hard for me and my wife is she, she's been a, a real advocate for that. The older you get, the more wisdom you have, the more things you see, it's easy to get, you know, down yeah. or to, to, to be crotchety. She's frustrated. Don't, don't be crotchety. Frustrated, don't be whatever, frustrated. Right, yeah. And, um, you know, if you, if you go about things and you have a positive attitude, thing, positive attitude, good things happen, right? Yeah. If you, you know, you got to believe in yourself. And I, and that's, you know, I had people tell me when I started, like, what do you, to be from Michigan, you could be a. From, right. You think you'll make a living at this sport? Right. My, I had a coach in in school, a teacher and coach. She's like, "Why are you wasted your time on fishing? You need to spend more time playing wow. baseball." And he was just trying to push me to be a better baseball player. But if you believe in yourself, and and you put the work in, you can accomplish anything. And that's that's you know these young kids out there. Yeah. Um. And uh, again, I look at a, a kid like Marshall Robinson. Yeah. That just earned his best pro tour card do it like that yeah i mean he put the work in and it, it wasn't easy and it's, it's not simple but if, if you believe in yourself and work hard enough good things gonna happen and do it yeah because yeah that attitude's everything it's all about the attitude right it is you got to believe man. yeah that's awesome if you if you don't believe in yourself nobody else will that's amazing well Kevin, 33 years. Thank you for all that, all the teaching, all the just, all the trophy lifting, all that stuff. <laughs> we appreciate you being on the Bilge Podcast here. Until next time, we'll uh, we'll see you later. Thank you, Kevin.